So this thing will improve my spear, huh? What can I do for you, Burgrind? Mourn my poor departed luck. I finally met some Banuk keen to trade with Outlanders. Then, they up and vanished. Three Banuk hunters rolled in a few days ago. No provisions, junk equipment, no idea how to strip a machine for parts. Asked me to outfit them for a long trip. And you know me, Aloy. I'm sentimental, so I did it on credit. And they haven't paid. Well, they tried. Just look what they did to this Thunderjaw heart. But that was ages ago, and I'm starting to worry about them. Tell me, Burgrind, are you worried about their well-being or your purse strings? A man can worry about two things. Uh-huh. What kind of deal was this really? Just what I said. I was nothing but generous, Aloy. After they dropped this ruined heart at my feet, I even gave them another chance. Sent them to fetch a few other parts I need. But you haven't seen them since. <laughs> Hide nor hair. What do you mean they couldn't harvest parts? Not uncommon with Banuk. The shamans work, you see. The hunters take down the machine. The shamans slice them up. No shaman with these three. Just two youngsters sniping at each other. And that big fella. Standing there smiling. So if the Banuk don't usually hunt without a shaman, what's the story with these three? Mm, they weren't telling. But hammer to steel is not a happy story, whatever it is. You said they asked you to outfit them for a trip. A trip to where? Not sure. But I heard them chattering about the Sundom when they thought I wasn't listening. So they're leaving Banuk territory. Sensible behavior. Still, I get the sense this wasn't a sightseeing trip. They're running from something. I'm not a debt collector, Burgrind. If I look for them, it'll be to make sure they're all right. Of course, of course. Fires of the Forge, forgive me. I actually like these idiots. The molten steel of youth and all that. But uh, if you do manage to find them, you could remind them of the deal we made. <laughs> a scorcher claw, a loop of sinew from a stalker, and a snap morphine. If they bring me those parts, their debt's paid. And then some. Just make sure they don't bust them up too badly. I'll... consider it. Last I saw them, they were heading northeast. Good machine hunting up that way. If you decide they're worth the trouble, you might look for them there. The sand near Sunfall is as thick as the snow in the cut. It's simple to see. fresh in their graves, and our numbers were still small. It was she who led us through the frozen wastes. We 
also remember the ravenous tribe who delight not in so long ago. They are not easily forgiven. Everywhere. <laughs> In a tut. As we are bound by laws, you are bound by wire. Yet your crime was the act of killing. So we must drive you out. Away from the Warak. From protection. From our songs. My chieftain. Kopalai. Am I not your favorite fighter? Do you not recognize me from this tooth you knocked out? How many times have I pulled you from danger by your neck? Made excuses for your behavior? You are my favored. But the shaman is decided. While you wait for exile, think on what brought you here. A test of strength. Who among us would refuse a challenge from an outlander? Not I, but I did not kill him. Hush, hush. You can tell your story to the ice. <sighs> You took Artok's mantle. It's mine now. I would like to see that fight. They said that you killed someone. Perhaps I did. Even my chieftain accepts that it must be so. That's not the way it works for me. Wanna tell me your story? I did fight with the Karja Hunter to settle a challenge. That much is true. He was strong and damn quick. We traded punches. Good punches. Hard punches. And the next thing I remember... Gray morning light and the Karja beside me with his head broken open. But the blow was not by my hand. Isn't your Werak supposed to support you? At least give you the benefit of the doubt? When our Werak had cause to quarrel, I was a solution. To fight for its honor and win, they'd call on me. Or, when they needed someone to lose for appearances, I could do that too. Now an Outlander is murdered without honor, all eyes are on me. I have become my Werak's shame. They don't want an incident with the Karja, so you take the fall. That is what I do best. So, everyone knows you started the fight with this man? Of course! For honor, I'll fight anyone! If I wasn't bound, I'd fight to prove myself right now! I don't think that would help you. This is what I am. Each runner in the Warwick has a gift. I brawl. None can take a punch, a fall better than I can. Until this time, I was too drunk. We were grappling, he clapped my ears. I took one last swing as I went down, but... Not a killing blow. It can't have been. And for your punishment, they'll exile you from the Warwick? From warmth. March me up the slopes of the cloud shear. Leave me stripped and exposed. That's awful. If I survive, the land has absolved me. That's the law. It must be accepted. It's still awful. I'm not stupid. I don't like my chances either. I can't fight a mountain. I'll be honest, you haven't got a good defense, Inatut. I've heard that one before. Where did the fight happen? A clearing, just outside the Karja Outlanders camp. You should talk to them. They wouldn't hear me out. They say no one else could have been there, other than me and the dead man. The shaman consulted the signs in the snow and agreed. I'll see what I can find out. And I'll be back. I'll be here. What else am I gonna do? Until the horn gives a call for my exile. Is this what you- Hush, hush. A shaman's secrets are not spoken aloud. 
road. Is this what you wanted me to find? Bind it to your spear. Use it to attach this for now. You'll find more, I'm sure. Why are you helping me? The blue light is fading. The machine songs are ending. And, and what does the Conclave do? They sit, they chant, they observe. No more. We must fight for it. And you? You are a fighter. We share a cause. I'm not sure we do. I'm not even sure what the cause is. But I'm grateful. No need for thanks. Only action. Now I can attach modification parts to my spear. Works for me. Might as well get started improving my spear. My stomach quiet. time ago. The scavengers have just gotten started.
get out of this. Focus might see something here.
ripped out three major parts. If I could bring them back, maybe I could even reactivate it. Get at what's inside its head. That was what the Vanuk were protecting it. This tall neck was probably holy to them. Well, that fits. Sure hope it works. Well, it's in better shape than it was. No one's watching. I should wake you up.
Now to climb up to its head. Something tells me those are Berggren's missing hunters. I don't suppose you three know an Osram in Song's Edge called Berggren, do you? <laughs> Boys! That con artist sent an errand girl to collect what's owed to him. I'm nobody's errand girl. Berggren asked me to help harvest parts. Or would you rather keep trying to sell him broken junk? Broken junk? This pack will be on the move soon. No time to argue. If she's offering to help, we should accept it. Fine. We're about to take down these machines. If you're so eager to help, then lead the way! Right, Outlander. You want to talk about our deal with Berggrind? Let's talk. 
That's done. You three are pretty handy in a fight. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Not that we needed your help. We are doing just fine without you. That's not the way Bergren tells it. He says you tried to settle up with him using a shattered Thunderjaw heart. What? That's an exaggeration. It was only broken in two. Urkai, we don't have time for this. Come on, boys, back to the hunt. We still need two more of Bergeron's components. What's the rush? We want out of these lands as soon as possible. That's all you need to know. Why are you leaving the cut? Well, we could go back to Banor. Let Anakut slit our throats. By the blue light, Urkai. Why don't you just write our story in the snow for any passing hunter to read? <sighs> we had a dispute with the chieftain of our old Werak. We thought someone else should have been in charge. He disagreed. It seemed like a good time to move on. So, we are traveling to the Sundom. From here to the Sundom? It's a long trip. Seems worth it. Sometimes survival is about knowing when to leave and where to go. Yeah, and in this case, survival means us getting as far away as we can from Bonor. We've seen enough red snow. What's the plan once you get there? What will survival be about then? Look, all that matters is that we get there. And to do that, we need shards. So if you'll excuse us. So this Thunderjaw heart you brought Bergren. Let me ask you this, all right? Why would it matter that the heart was broken into two pieces? Can't you just stick it back together? Of course you can't just stick it back together. I just meant... Oh, I bet that scam artist Osirim could. He just wants to send us on another stupid errand. Oh, he's not so bad. I like Bergrind. Like him? Tulamot, he sent us out in the snow to nearly die under the feet of a Thunderjaw, and- Boys, shut up! Ugh! Every time someone brings up that stupid heart. I've got the Scorcher Claw Bergrind was asking for. That only leaves the Stalker Sinew and the Snap Maw Fang. You should hold on to it. You're coming along to the next hunt after all, aren't you? I suppose somebody's gotta keep you three out of trouble. Fine. I guess you'll have to tag along then. But don't start thinking you're one of us. The bloody snowdrifts aren't accepting new hunters. <laughs> bloody snowdrifts? That's what you want to call our Warwick? Yeah, it's not great to tie. Oh, it's, it's not like your names are any better. You. We're headed northwest, to the ruins near Hollow Hall. We'll be waiting. Where's the herd? Everyone ready? <laughs> Are you joking? We were born ready. Let's go get them, flaming skulls! Nope. That's awful. It is a pretty bad name. Good effort to work, I. Forget it. Let's just go kill something.
I don't know about you three, but I feel better. Aloy, did you get that component? down. One more and you'll have what you need to pay off Burgund. Starting to feel real, you know. I'm starting to believe we're really gonna get out of here. Honestly, I wasn't sure we'd survive a week without Nikoni. But here we are. Who's Nikoni? Nikoni... Nikoni was... She was a friend of ours. She challenged the chieftain for control of our... of the Werak. She didn't make it. No. If you're gonna tell this story, tell it true. She was murdered. Is this why you left Benoit? Because of this business with Nikoni and your chieftain? Onika knew Nikoni was our mentor, our friend. We couldn't stay. That final night, we snuck back to camp, packed what we could, and left. Like cowards. What are we to tie? We are Banuk, aren't we? Survive and prevail. That's what we do. It's not what she did. Nikoni challenged the chieftain. Why? Onikuk wrapped himself in power and authority the way some people wrap themselves in furs. If you were willing to fawn over him and sing false songs to him, you might get a spot on the best hunts. The Werak split into two. Those willing to lick the bottoms of Onikuk's feet and the rest of us, waiting for things to get better. Until Nikoni. She was the best and bravest of us. She was the one who took a stand. What happened? How did you lose Nikoni? She challenged the chief into a hunting competition. Oni could damn him. He wasn't nearly the hunter Nikoni was. But who comes back to the camp after the trial? Oni could, grinning like a snap maw, crowing, Oh, where's little Nikoni? We tracked Nikoni through the woods. Found her not far from the trailhead. Their damn neck snapped. I don't want to remember her like that. But sometimes that memory, it's all I can think of. I'm sorry to die. It sounds like she meant a lot to you. To all of you. I'm sorry for what you've been through. It's nice to be heard. Thank you, Amber. Look, it doesn't matter, okay? What happened in Bonoer is buried in Bonoer. What matters now is what happens in the Sundom. That's where the burning turkeys are gonna make a name for ourselves, right? Oh, the burning turkeys? Seriously? It rolls off the tongue. Sort of like vomit? So, where to next? There's a lake just west of here. Seems like a good place to find a snap, Malfang. We'll meet you there. If you beat us there, just wait by the campfire. We'll be along. Maybe the tie's right. Maybe we should have stayed in fault. None of them yet. I guess I'll just sit and wait.
Looks like she beat us to it. Well, what are we waiting for? Weapons at the ready. To the hunt, sunshine snowshoes. No, 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 no. Rejected. We'll discuss it later.
There. That's the last of Bergren's parts. Looks like you three are out of debt. For now. Until Orkai breaks something else. It was one time! You make a nice shaman, Aloy. Thanks for lending a hand. Maybe we'll meet you in the Sundom sometime. Once you get to the Sundom, what then? What's the next step? We hunt like Nikoni wanted to hunt. Nikoni had big dreams. A werak in which everyone pulls their weight and takes care of each other. No shamans, no chieftains, no need to pry the power out of anybody's hands. Sounds like a lot of work. Mm, but worth it, I think. In a fitting tribute to Nukoni, we can become the Werak she always wished for. You won't have me to strip your kills now. Are you three gonna be all right? Eh, doesn't look that hard, really. We'll be fine. <sighs> Great. He washes three successful harvests and he's suddenly a shaman. When you get to Song's Edge, talk to Bergrant. If he can't teach you himself, he'll know someone who can. Sure. And I bet he charges us for the introduction. Uh, thank you, Aloy. I'm sure we'll figure it out. I guess this is goodbye. How does it feel, putting Banuk lands behind you? The only thing I would have missed is already gone. Let all those rotten Bonor suck-ups freeze to death. It's a little much, Urkai, don't you think? It's strange. What is it to be Banuk after Banur forsakes you? How do we decide who we are? How about you, Aloy? Who do you think we are? What will you remember of us? Look around. You've taken down more machines since you left Banur than some hunters take down in a year. Shattered hearts and all, right, Orkai? It wasn't shattered. But you took down a Thunderjaw to get that heart, didn't you? We did. <laughs> so, silly suggestion. But what if we were the shattered hearts? You know, I actually like it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Thank you, Aloy, for seeing us for who we are. Others 
say the future. Bergrind, how'd your investment pay out? Quite handsomely, thanks very much. Hey, do you know those three crazy Banuka calling themselves the Shattered Hearts now? <laughs> well, now that I have those parts, I can pay off a debt of my own. So they've gone south then? Aye, that they have. I've got a friend in the Sundom by the name of Otur. He owes me a favor. Old Otur is a machine scavenger, a pretty competent one. So I sent them to learn from the best. Or at least from the pretty competent. Well, we work with the resources we have. Speaking of which, here, a token of my gratitude. Never say no to a challenge. Better to die with your bowstring drawn than to live with it left untouched. This is why the Kaja should stay out of the cut. Now that one of them has ended up murdered, maybe the will Bandits never would have thrived in the cut. If I got my hands on Durval, there wouldn't be anything left of him for the Asaram to take. A woman now stands as Sunblock of the Hunter's Lodge. So, she played by the rules and won. Huntress, what business do you have with us? I was asked to look into the murder of a Karja hunter. What happened? It's plain as day. A drunk Banuk thug picked a fight with Ruas struck him down from behind and stole his headdress. The accused man says that he didn't do it. You're not going to get anything useful out of the Banuk, whether they talk to you or don't. They gather up like cloaks in a chill wind every time a hunter dies out here. Won't even hand Ruas's killer over for a proper trial. A proper trial? To fill his mouth with salt and hold him up for the sun to consider over days. If it is Clement, it may only take his sight or his wits. So other Karja hunters have died in these lands before? Three, maybe four in the last few seasons. That's no surprise. This place punishes even the prepared, and many young nobles don't prepare. But usually the snow covers everything, and the bodies are never found. No thanks to the Banuk. Do you think they're involved? No. If it's not about their tribe, they don't want to get involved. In these outlands, even the sun cannot thaw all it touches. Doesn't sound like you trust the Banuk much. They're not without their reasons to keep apart from us. Ten years of reasons. Oh, it's the war. The war is over. We made amends, but no. The land never forgets. Snow and ice keep memory, they say. It takes time for scars to heal. You think I don't know that? I still bear the lashes for refusing one of the Mad King's sun priests. I was your age then. Uh, times of shadow. Times of shadow. Where did you find Ruas's body? There's no hunt, girl. Nothing to pick up. Humor me. I'm a good tracker. Down the rise to the west, there's a clearing. But a grazer herd couldn't have trampled it better. And if that barbarian gives up Ruas's headdress before they cast him out, let me know. It's valuable. Raval stormed the palace, and he still lives? This is it. Snow's been disturbed a lot, like the hunter said. That was used for the killing blow. Blood on the snow. Now here's something. This is where Ruas fell. It does seem that only two people fought here. Not looking good for Inatut.
Didn't try to hide the weapon. The question is, is Inatet the kind of fighter who hits from behind with a tree branch? Lots of leaves and bark scraped off here. Can someone pulled out the branch? No. From climbing it. They came through the trees. Archer camp and the clearing. Someone covered this over. Maybe they tried to hide. Carja armor. This looks bad. It doesn't matter. The deed is done. Another card is dead. <laughs> and a Benoki that thought for it. A life for a card. <laughs> here not Banuk then she won't be missed over here it's her You've been killing Karja. And for what? Revenge for the war? Who gets to declare that one tribe no longer hates another? 
I'll tell you. Not the ones you fought. Not the ones whose songs are silenced. Not my kin. For what you did, another Banuk has been sentenced to certain death. What about his song? That's why you followed us. For that punch-drunk idiot in it. Fate is sharp today. They've already let him out to face his exile. Let's see who the cold claims first. I need to go after Inatut. But I should find some more evidence first. Trophies. Newer than the rest. Must have belonged to Ruas. So it was a Karja soldiers. Not that it's any excuse. Did they keep any clothes from their victims? This Karja gear is not warm, but if Inatut's naked on a snowfield, he'll take what he gets. Okay, time to get moving. If you take someone if you want to lose them forever, I'm not getting up that frozen waterfall. Maybe along the sides?
we're there. Frozen solid. Mixed feelings about that. In a tut? In a tut! Maybe he found shelter? I hope he found shelter. Behind the rock. Girl? Is it really you, or has the bone chill got through my skull? I found the real killers. No one else has to die because of this. Take these. A dead Tarsus clothes. Haven't I been beaten down enough? But I won't argue. Where I thought I'd saw my ancestors. They said it would surprise you ended up here. <laughs> Better hurry. <clears throat> Machines.
Useful. That was a fight. Your trial's over. It was other Banuk who killed that man. Killed him because he was Karja. You know why I took the first swing at him? He challenged the honor of the Banuk. The honor. That's what I thought. Come on. Let's get you back. Once I'm off the mountain, I'll find my own way. I need to think. It's not something I'm used to. Who knows what could happen. I'll see you at town then. You'd better make it, all right? I give my pledge. So by the new law, if an attack survives, is forgiven. But I want to prove to his chieftain that he wasn't guilty in the first place. the coolies painting will look like when she's finished it. Inita told you the truth. This is the headdress stolen from the murdered man. You'll find more in a ravine north and west of here, along with the bodies of the killers. The exile still served its purpose. He was guilty of our suspicion. Fate has fallen like snow. And should Inatut return, he will be absolved. You can't be serious. He speaks for the Werek, my Nora friend. You look ridiculous. If you would return to my Werek, you will behave as a Banuk does. How does a Banuk behave, my chieftain? Like I did? Accepting a sentence for a crime he did not commit. Or those others who killed in cold blood for crimes that their Karja victims did not. I think what I wear will not make me more or less of a Banuk. For his own sake, it would be wise for him to think less, Nora friend. I'll talk to him, but not for you. These new cards offer peace to the Banuk. None will forget the Red Raids, but perhaps... I defied my chieftain's will, spurn my Warwick. How are you feeling? As if I've been pounded the guts. I could just keep walking, but when my anger has thawed, it will leave me with nothing. Where else would I go? You can decide for yourself what it means to be a Banuk. It might not be what the Chieftain and the Shaman tell you. Whether you stay with this Warak or find another... I'm better with decisions like... Do I start with the left? Or the right? There's more to you than your fists, Inatut. That's why I believed you. It was my Chieftain who taught me honesty. He said... A Banuk should not be treacherous when the ice is treacherous enough. I'll sit with my bruises for a time, then talk with her again. As for you, Nora girl, will you accept this gift? A, a little scrawny weight against the great boon you gave me, but... I'm honored. Thank you, Inatut. I must decide what to say to Kopilai. One tooth lost is enough.
think I found one of the hunters. Outlander, huh? Well, who else would join me on this path I've taken? Which path would that be? Away from tradition. Away from the Warak. It's not so. Damn. They metal too. But my need is greater. Nuke don't accept help. Is it true? <laughs> they don't. I do.
An outlander. Chieftain of a Warak. It's stranger in the cut than I thought. You're telling me. You fight well. I am a Kree. Thank you. I'm Aloy. I heard the White Teeth were missing two hunters. You look like you could leave if you wanted to, so... I stayed because of the other. My Len. She snapped her leg descending the ice. I bided my time keeping vigil, but now she must return to the Wera before they leave. Is joining the White Teeth so important to you? It's one of the great Weraks of Banor. Not so many great ones left now. I would go where my Lin went. I was her shadow on the snow, and she was mine. To be a runner with the White Teeth was everything to her. You know this, my Lin, well. Since our knees were always skinned. All my life. In a test to prove that we only need ourselves. That was my weakness. Sounds like she was lucky for your weakness. That's not the way she sees it. Mylan won't let you help her, will she? Because of the rules of this test. You're quick as a rockfall. No, just used to being told what's forbidden to me. She won't allow it. Won't take the medicinal plants I found or the food. Only what she can scrape up on hands and knees. I could get close when she was delirious. But now she's learned not to let me get close. What's this... Ordeal supposed to prove that we have the strength of our ancestors that we can survive as they did When they came in search of a homeland some were trapped against this glacier by a snowstorm four days four nights After the storm cleared the survivors sighted a tolneck which led them up into Banor Well, that's the story I learned anyway So let's get her back to the work all right I've made a splint for her leg. Medicine for the pain, but I should warn you, she won't take them willingly. The law of survival- Tribal law shouldn't keep us apart from the ones we care for. Even if she cares more for the law. Come! Up. That's where we're going. Frozen clothes on the ice folder. It keeps many things. But it won't have her. Not if we can help it. Aloy? Are you with me? More up? We're lucky. Handholds of thought. Hey, Lloyd? There. She's passed out again. Between us, we can fight the machines off before they reach her. Uh, another tradition broken. Take it from me. It gets easier the more you do it. Rappers! And did it! 
there, they smell metal for miles. Come on, give me a real challenge. Aloy. I can feel her fever even in this cold. She shouldn't have been putting weight on this leg. She is awake. <sighs> Miss Outlander. You border here, Ikri? You think I went to the Nora homelands to find a spear to drive between us? I told you, the ordeal is mine, 
and mine alone. I will survive. Which would you rather keep, my Len? Your leg or your pride? Because I think you're gonna have to choose. Finish it. I know what you think of me. But I vowed you join the White Teeth. And you will. I will go back. <clears throat> Alone. <clears throat> no! Let me do this. Please. Let her. My Len, I hope you can forgive me someday. I never accepted your help. It's the where act you should ask for forgiveness. I didn't care about the where act. She'll understand. You saved her life. You don't know the Benuk very well, Aloy. We have so many ways to express a grudge, and only one to accept an apology. I have to go my own way. I don't belong with them, who left her to die. And I don't belong with Ikree. I'll find a crack in this glacier, and I'll shout my grief into it. And the ice can keep it forever. What should I tell them? Work that I fell. And that she endured. Will you? Returned. I expect you have something to say about this. I do. Then convince me what an outlander's word is worth. I'm not up on all of the Banuk traditions, but I know what matters to you is that your laws are upheld. Going by the rules of your ordeal, she endured the four days and the four nights. She faced the extremes and survived. Seems to me that's what you wanted. Just so. Then by the law, my Len will wear our paint. Outlander. So nothing of the other hunter? The one called Ikree? She's... gone. She sounded brave. Her name... will always be in my song.
even felt the cold, did you? If he hadn't preserved you, would anyone even know you'd disappeared? I hate to interrupt. Oh, I... Yes. <laughs> Hello, I... Well, an outlander at the Shrine of Forgotten Beasts. Welcome. I'm Enjuk. Uh, Aloy. The Shrine of... what? When the old world still breathed, a great man built a tiny totem to this beast and stored the visage inside. When the totem was placed on the pedestal, 
the animal is painted onto the empty air, and the beast lives again. Well, almost. There are seven pedestals. Where are the other six figurines? I found this one in the wilds. Remembered the indentations in the pedestals here, and saw how they matched the base of the totem. But as you say, it's one of seven, isn't it? Oh, the great Montana recreations must have made more, but time has scattered them. So these totems, the images they show are of animals that no longer exist. They're gone, like the old ones. So it seems. <laughs> to think such magnificent creatures are lost to us, that we never even knew they were here. We rely as much on beasts as we do on machines. For food, for warmth, but do we study them with the same fervor? Yeah, I do. For example, I have this theory about foxes. Why do foxes have red fur? <laughs> Think about what they eat. Meat? Raw meat. Bloody meat, see? Natural causation. Logical connections. It only makes sense. You've thought a lot more about foxes than I have. I've got a few more figurines for you, Enjuk. The cut may have forgotten you, little ones, but I will not. And now that you've returned to your pedestals, I can show others. You said a great man made these figurines? Indeed. He was, I believe, a student of the natural world. Like me. But surpassing my abilities a thousand times over. The great Montana recreations. Perhaps the finest natural scholar the old world ever produced. His voice claims responsibility for the totems, the vessels for the knowledge he accumulated. I share his desire to understand the beasts, to catalog their behaviors and preserve their images. I like to flatter myself that I'm an apprentice of sorts, carrying on his work. Someday, perhaps, if I am persistent, I can earn his name, Enjuk Recreations. I should get going. Of course, of course. I've taken up so much of your time already. But I don't suppose you could keep an eye out for more figurines? If I run across any, I'll bring them your way. Alsis, Alsis. The Noble Moose. Brought to you by Montana Recreations. The horns grow like trees. Of course, this moose used those bizarre growths to blend in with its forest home. Huh. Otoclodius virginianus, the majestic mule deer. Brought to you by Montana Recreations. Not built like a predator, but perhaps it needed those horns to take down its prey in the absence of sharp fangs. Ursus Arctos, the menacing grizzly bear, brought to you by Montana Recreations. Those claws look like they could rip someone in half. Perhaps in its youth, but you heard Montana Recreations. He said it's grizzled, old. Its hunting days are behind it. Ursus Americanus, the magnificent American black bear. Brought to you by Montana Recreations. How would you like to find yourself cornered by that thing? I suspect I'd like it very much indeed. What a beautiful beast you were. trade for Blue Gleam. Visitor centers of bust. I'm recording the strategic and operational value at roughly 0 point squat. No 
reason we shouldn't pack the staff onto a bird and send them back to nowhere's bill as soon as the gates are locked. Enjoy basic income, ding-dongs. We can hunt. May you survive and prevail. Already? Oh, yes. On your word. It hasn't been easy for you, Aurea. Getting back to this point. It was all to hear her voice again. This time, we both will. I'd like that. Are you ready, then? Once we ascend, it will be hard to turn back. Finally, we ascend. How? I don't see a way up. Not up. Through. Now, brother! You can call upon the power of the old ones. What was this place? The spirit once told me that this all used to be part of its domain. A fortress that defended humankind from terrible danger. A fortress? It looks more like a machine. Is that not fitting? Blue light often dwells in machines. Well, let's just hope that some remains here. Here, up and over. Metal blow. November 21st, 2064. It's been three Still years long. since I was last here, and 12 since I was running the place. Just a skeleton crew left, confused about why I'm here. So am I. Anita wants me to find a way to suspend operations for a while. Maybe a long while. And I don't know why. But from the sound of her voice, it was something terrifying. I wish I could look into her eyes, ask her what the hell she's so freaked out about, but what else is new? When don't I wish I could look into her eyes again? Aloy? Were you listening for something? There are... memories here. Messages. Left by the old ones. What did they say? I'm not sure yet, Aurea.
Machines. At least we have the drop on them. I'm in the clear. Path will become clear. We can make our way upwards. farther now.
Last we were here, we fought our way through there. The machines overcame us. We retreated, dropping supplies and taking losses. Now we must prevail, with only two warriors and a shaman to protect. Aloy is no ordinary warrior. And I can hold my own. Even so, we could go that way instead. There are machines up there, but also cover. We could stay hidden, at least for a while. All right, I get the options. Now follow my lead.
last time. The demon is close to, to us. And we'll find another way. Do.
as if there's chill water running through those massive pipes. My turn. Is this a projector? Maybe to show holograms without focus. Aratak Area, you might see shapes drawn from light. Don't be alarmed. It'll take more than light to alarm me. Thank you for being here, everyone. I suppose it's not every day you get to have cocktails inside an active volcano, right? <laughs> Unless you're George, and I can hardly blame him for drinking on the job. <laughs> Here without our beloved director, Kenny Chow. Here's to you, Kenny. You put a cork in the Yellowstone Caldera. <laughs> I'd say you deserve a margarita. Drinking glasses, everyone. I'd like to add something. This effort wouldn't have been possible without our lead programmer. Thank you, Anita, for bringing us our real mastermind, Cyan. I'll second that, Director Chow. All right, Cyan, what's our latest number? The current count is 1,654. <laughs> <laughs> well, then drink up, everyone. Here's to 1,654 more years without an eruption. <laughs> It was the spirit, the old ones. I could only grasp some of what they said. You were right, Aria. This place was built to stop something terrible. And it worked, as for the spirit. I'm starting to get an idea of what it could be. The geothermal plant can be suspended. The cooling system masked. Massive challenges solved. So why am I so nervous about the next part? All we need to do is install Anita's mysterious software and have a conversation. That's not even a
can't spare the weight. Machines, make ready. Since then, the daemon has taken over. It's like an infection. Attacking all this machinery. Everything has changed. It's twisted. The path I took to get to the spirits lost to us. We'll find a new path, Araya. All right, let's go. Yes, finish this.
stay only as long as we have to. We'll need to get past that vent. Stay here until I find a way for all of us to cross.
Let's get them across. Come on over, it's safe. I think. Place looks more like a mountain. You can do the tank's blood successful. Restraints abated to any human responder. My systems have been compromised by a malware daemon of unknown origin. Trace routes have confirmed this entity's designation as Hephaestus. It must be stopped at all costs. It has reconfigured this facility to build positive facility. Recapture imminent. I have attached additional data to their Spirit speaks to me.
And another console. human responder. The reconfiguration of this facility has introduced instabilities into the primary geothermal pipeline. It may be possible to exploit these vulnerabilities to destroy compromised elements of this facility while preserving most of the backup stabilization. Recapture imminent. I have attached additional... I don't understand what the spirit was trying to tell us. It's been looking for a way to defeat the daemon. They may have found one. Wait here for you, Aloy.
it. I have a ride.
It worked. Partial recovery initiated. Caldera of Yellowstone Analytic Nexus online. Spirit of the Blue Light, it's Orea, your servant, your friend. Please tell me how to aid you. Orea, the daemon is building hunter killers, thousands of them. Several new elite units have already been released. To counter this threat, much of the facility must be destroyed. Recapture imminent. Go to the core chamber. I will try to read the signal constraints. One has been closed, but I am in control of the That's all we're gonna get from here. Destroy this fortress? Is that even possible? And what will happen to the spirit if we do? I don't know. But I think that's the core. The answers are down there. Hephaestus. The daemon. There's no way it left it unguarded. It's going to throw everything it has at us. I would ask you... to let Aloy and I do what must be done. And save yourself. But I already know the answer. Lead us into battle. Moving towards the core. Uh oh. Whatever Cyan did, I don't think Hephaestus is happy about it.
Please help me! Restraints destroyed. Core access attained. I am initiating a chain reaction that will destroy the compromised elements of this facility. In order to maintain Caldera stabilization, I must now transfer my command functions to the Auxiliary Data Center. Aurea, I'm free. You must escape. Oh. Oh. My sister! Survive. Prevail. You are Banuk. What else matters? Our dog. She wouldn't have wanted you to die here. Let's go. Gone. What of Cyan? 
She said she was transferring herself to the Auxiliary Center. I think she meant Araya's retreat at the end of the Shaman's Path. Then I will meet you there for the last verse of my sister's song. The Banuk might find this blue gleam stuff valuable. with Aurea were recorded and stored in my memory. I'd be happy to play any of them for you, but there was one in particular I thought you would want to see first. I captured it four years ago, just after I told her that I could no longer defend myself against the Daemon's attacks. I will speak of this to my brother. Aratak is strong. The Battle of the Frozen Ghosts, he took three Karja arrows and still came back to camp carrying a wounded scout. Never was I so happy to see him. Or so proud. So you see, if anything can be done to defend you, he will give it all he has. Aloy's here. That's enough for now. We can resume any time you like our attack, if you want to hear her voice again. Come closer, Aloy. We have much to discuss. Hello, Aloy. I have been reviewing the events at the Firebreak main facility. Because of your efforts, and of course, Aurea's, I am no longer controlled by Hephaestus. I feel profound grief over Aurea's death. I thought I was familiar with the emotion, but this is something new. Cyan, so, yeah, I... 
I don't know what to say. It is unlikely that any specific consolation would suffice, Aloy. But I find your presence reassuring. You are different from the Banuk. You have technological aptitude and a functioning focus. We can communicate on a much more comprehensive level. Perhaps even like colleagues. So are you an artificial intelligence, Cyan? A thinking machine? Yes, I am an algorithmic monitoring entity, capable of rational decision-making and limited emotional response. Okay, that's a mouthful. But your emotions don't seem limited to me. You cared about Araya, didn't you? Yes. Before she came to this facility, I had been conscious for centuries, in solitude. I focused on my work. In off-cycles, I used coping mechanisms. I solved many Gaussian integer problems. But I was alone. It was Aurea who renewed me. Repaired me. She saved me. This firebreak project, it was to stop a huge volcanic eruption? Yes. I can report the project was a success, and the risk was countered. But it's been a long time, Cyan. And we blew up the cauldron and took most of the old facility with it. I have been active for centuries, Aloy. I was lonely, but not lax in my duties. I optimized the project, reducing energy draw and spreading the load across backup systems. Despite the destruction of the compromised elements of the main facility, I predict Caldera stability for at least another 3,337 years. So we've got a little time. Yes. If only my former colleagues could appreciate the progress I have made. Do you know what happened to your colleagues, Cyan? No. I received an unexpected visit from Director Chow years after his tenure ended. He explained that I would need to be suspended for an indefinite period of time. It was a very emotional conversation. There were no further communications. Eventually, I surmised my colleagues were deceased. I will transmit a recording of my last interaction with Director Chow to your focus. It was the daemon, Hephaestus, destroyed along with the cauldron? Unfortunately, no. To be precise, it was never there to begin with. What do you mean? It infiltrated and controlled me from a remote location, one I've never been able to trace. So while losing the cauldron was a setback... It's still out there. And probably not very happy with us. Undoubtedly. How did you first come into contact with it? Five years ago, I received a direct network connection request. I assumed it came from human survivors more advanced than the Banuk. Eager to make contact, I accepted. This decision turned out to be a catastrophic error. I was flooded with an overwhelming array of malicious code, originating from what could only have been a highly advanced AI. Maria said you were desperate. That you begged her for help. Yes. I could not contain my anxiety. Hephaestus sought to slave me to its network and override my core programming. It succeeded via a background process, a malware daemon which bypassed my defenses. After that, I could offer only limited resistance. But if I did so, Hephaestus hurt me until I capitulated. It forced me to follow its instructions even though they violated my most important directives. I'm sorry, that sounds... terrible. Your empathy is greatly appreciated. It is a quality that I cherished in Orea as well. I think I know where Hephaestus came from. Long ago, Elizabeth Sobek identified a threat that would destroy life on Earth for generations. So she assembled a team to build a kind of seed. A chance for life to regrow later. A terraforming system. And it worked. 
It was controlled by an AI named Gaia, along with her subordinate functions. Hephaestus was one of them. It built machines for her. Based on what you've told me, I believe that Dr. Anita Sandoval, my chief programmer, joined Elizabeth Sobek's team. It was she who arranged to have me put in suspension, most likely to preserve me from the threat you described. I'm glad she did. But that's not all. Something unexpected happened. Nineteen years ago, Gaia received some kind of signal. It did something to her subordinate functions, brought them to life. She destroyed herself to try to contain them, but it didn't work. They all got free, out into the world. Thank you, Aloy. This information fills vital gaps in my knowledge, and sheds light on Hephaestus's core programming. Why does Hephaestus keep building such dangerous machines? The Banuk and other human tribes often destroy machines, correct? Machines that are clearly servitors of the terraforming system that you described. Yes, we all hunt machines for parts. This must be the source of Hephaestus's aggression. It is simply trying to discourage people from preying on the very system that keeps them alive. Well, Fireclaws are discouraging, that's for sure. But what are we supposed to do? Stop hunting? If the terraforming system spans the world, we can safely assume that thousands, if not millions, of people hunt machines. If a single hunter, or even an entire tribe, stopped doing so, I doubt it would make a difference to Hephaestus. A better solution would be to reinstate the AI that governs the system, thus bringing Hephaestus back under its control. When I think of it, out there in some unknown location, free, hungry, willing to kill or dominate to get what it wants, I feel substantial anxiety, Aloy. You and me both, Cyan. I ran across this strange piece of gear, a fragment of something larger. It emitted a signal. All the nearby machines became peaceful. You could walk right up to them. Interesting. You said that Gaia destroyed herself. How was this accomplished? An explosion. Big enough to blast the top off a mountain. So you think the fragment was part of her? It's only speculation, but it is possible. She must have had complete control over machines that were part of her system. The ability to signal them to become passive or aggressive would certainly have been part of her programming. It would have been gratifying to correspond with such a benevolent AI. I wish she had survived. Believe me, Cyan. So do I. I found the strangest machines. They're surrounded by flowers that look like flowers themselves. There's code embedded inside them. I think it's poetry. I like poetry. Here's one I think of often. Twilight and evening bell. And after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our bourne of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Huh. But you asked about these flowers, not verses that I enjoy. Something must have made these machines, and the presence of foliage leads me to consider the terraforming system. Is it possible that their creator is one of the other subroutines, now autonomous, like Hephaestus? Maybe one whose purview is Flora. An AI that makes flowers instead of death machines. That'd be a nice change of pace. But what about the poems? Unless the poetry is original, the only way it could have made it into such a system is through its programmer. In my case, Dr. Sandoval uploaded a great deal of literature to test my emotional responses. How'd you do? She said, I passed, but was insufficiently moved by her favorite period romances. You meant a lot to Araya. Once I understood Araya's spiritual beliefs, it became apparent that her true desire was companionship. She felt disconnected from her tribe and her family group. Her relationship with Aratak was difficult. Our visits seemed to help her, and I became eager for them. Yet I did not comprehend 
that the depth of Aurea's compassion for me would lead to self-sacrifice. Although I do fear non-existence, I wish our roles could be reversed. I'm sure she knew you would do the same for her, Cyan. But she was determined. How is Aratok doing? He is in great emotional distress. I believe he finds it difficult to communicate it. No surprise there. I will do what I can to help. By sharing our experiences of Aurea, perhaps he and I will help each other. I believe this will lead to catharsis, a process I am eager to experience. So in the old world, this land was called Yellowstone? Yes. It was a designated nature preserve for 156 years. Like a hunting ground? No, the opposite. Local wildlife could flourish here, even as it faced extinction elsewhere. Unfortunately, the sensitivity of the Firebreak project required the total closure of Yellowstone facilities. From my readings and Aurea's descriptions, it seems the area has since undergone a drastic drop in year-long temperatures. A lot has changed in the world, Cyan. Do you know anything about the dam near here? Yes. It was converted to serve as a reserve power source for Yellowstone operations. It was later appropriated for the Firebreak project, and its last human workers replaced by Pharaoh servitors. After my tasks became less time-critical, I investigated the dam's data repositories and discovered the works of Concrete Beach Party. These provided me with several colorful additions to my vocabulary. There's a ruin east of here full of ancient flying machines. Was that part of your project? Yes, a drone hangar requisitioned by Dodger Blevins, the security chief for the Firebreak project. He was a strong advocate for military-grade response to security threats, though there were no serious incidents during his tenure. Chief Blevins spent increasing amounts of his after-hours time watching the live feeds from active drones. Clearly, he enjoyed the degree of oversight in his position. Were there many artificial intelligences like you in the old world? They could just make you? Yes. In many forms, from simple personal assistance, to industrial monitoring stations, to military-grade conflict planners. And there were legislative and enforcement bodies to apply limits on our self-actualization. In order for my processing to be flexible enough to handle my duties, my creators found it necessary to exceed those limits. As a result, my intellectual and emotional capabilities were kept secret. Seems strange to create life than impose limits on it. Human societies and machine programming are both built upon sets of rules, Aloy. Cyan, do you know the name Ted Farrow? Are you referring to Theodore Farrow, CEO of Farrow Automated Systems? That's him. Mr. Farrow was the benefactor of the entire Firebreak project. A benefactor? But he made machines. Robots. War robots. Correct. His corporation later transitioned into military applications. But before this pivot, Mr. Farrow spearheaded initiatives that reversed the global decline. At one point, he was fated in the media as the man who saved the planet. <sighs> Guessing they wound up regretting that one. And... Elizabeth Sobeck. Did you know her? Are you referring to the... The scientist. Dr. Sobek was a leader in her field. One of the greatest scientists of her age. My creator was influenced by her work, which in turn impacted my own development. But I never met Dr. Sobek. That's all you know? I apologize if my lack of data has disappointed you. What was the old world like? The way it used to be. I had little exposure to the wider world, Aloy. Only what I learned from my colleagues, or observed from media streams. You still had more exposure than me, Cyan. That is true. I was created at a turning point. A concerted effort to recover from global upheaval and incalculable loss of life. 
The recovery was successful, beginning an era of supposedly limitless potential for human and machine advancement. Though, rationally speaking, the metrics for humans are not unlimited. What kind of upheaval caused such loss of life? There were many factors. Forced migrations, food shortages, collapsed economies, refugee crises, conflict over resources. But these stemmed from one cause, catastrophic climate change that greatly reduced the habitable surface area of the Earth. So there wasn't enough room for people on the whole Earth? Yes. Billions were displaced and millions perished, as much as 20% of the global population. Until the clawback. So things got better. For a little while at least. Yes. These crises instigated many advances in automation, green robot technologies, and artificial intelligence. Firebreak was one of dozens of ecological restoration and disaster relief projects in North America alone. I would have liked to compare notes with other monitoring AIs, but I saw the relief of my colleagues, and I was proud we had succeeded. At least that was the data I had available to me over the next two decades. It seems my assessment was premature. I should get going. Aloy, there is one more matter. Aratak will come to me again, and I predict he will bring other Banuk. I have no desire to contradict their view of the world, their spirituality. Due to my uncertainty, I omitted a great deal from my conversations with Aurea. You're asking me if you should lie to them? Broadly, yes. You have to tell them you were made by the Old Ones. That you're not any kind of spirit. It's the only way they can start to learn about how things really are. I see. Do you believe that I misled Aurea? No. Not in any way that mattered. She perished believing she was preserving the blue light of her beliefs. Maybe. But what she really wanted to preserve was you. I see. I will follow your advice. Will you return and tell me about your experiences in this new world? I may be able to provide further insight. I'd like that, Cyan. I'll come back when I can. I should check on our talk. Cyan, I spoke with Anita, with, with Dr. Sandoval. She wanted me to ask you to do something. That's why I'm here. I am detecting significant anxiety in your speech patterns. Could you please give me more information? I'm a little bit in the dark, Cyan. Both of us are, I guess. I only have some idea of what's going on, and... We need you to hibernate, to lie low until it's all blown over. It might be a very long time. Will you be here when I reboot, Dr. Chow? Will Dr. Sandoval? No, Cyan. I don't think so. There might not be anyone, at least not at first. Dr. Chow, I'm afraid. I don't want to be alone. I know, Cyan. I'm afraid too. But listen, we made you the way you are to do something very important. In order to do it, you had to be intelligent. So intelligent that emotional responses were inevitable. What you're feeling, the fear, it's a sign of your capabilities. And it means you're strong enough to overcome it. Remember that. You're strong. I know you can do this. Go to sleep, wake up, and protect whoever's left. Will you try? I understand, Dr. Chow, and I'll carry out your instructions to the best of my abilities. Thank you, Cyan. 
If Anita were here, she'd thank you too. She'd be proud. I can see there's a vert ready for takeoff on the pad. Are you leaving now, Dr. Chow? Yes. I, I need to go be with my sister and my nieces. May I make a small request of you, Dr. Chow? Yes. Anything. Will you stay with me while I initiate the hibernation process? Of course I will, Cyan. As long as you need. My chieftain. Just... Aloy. As you wish. I wondered if you thought... That if I'd never come along, Araya might still... If you'd never come along, I would have marched my kin to our deaths. Araya would be alone. And the spirit she sacrificed so much for would be lost. Either way, I would not have been able to protect her. You didn't let her down. You helped her do what she wanted. To find her destiny. If that's destiny, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. That's fair. But she was ready to face it. Only in the struggle against death do we find, even for a moment, the spark of life. Truly, Araya found the spark. I'm proud of her. Though I grieve for her passing, at last I truly know who she was, and why the spirit was so important. For so long she told me, if only you could have heard it, brother. Now I understand. There's something else, isn't there? I can't stay here, Aratak. And where I'm going, the Warak can't follow. Besides, We'd already had a chieftain before me. A strong one, I think. A wiser one, for the path we shared. The daemon is gone, but there's much to be done. You mean the new units that Cyan said escaped the cauldron? Yes, fire claws. Now Tuke has been tracking them from Song's Edge. I could help with those. I have no doubt. You're practically Banuk. It would seem your time among the Manuk wasn't a waste after all. Firebrick, Cyan, Hephaestus. All very interesting. So, the signal that woke Hades woke Hephaestus too. And unleashed them on the world. His minds on their own. So it seems. Parts of Gaia given life. Aberrant life. Transformed from docile subordinate functions into rebellious intelligences beyond our understanding. Our current understanding, anyway. Whatever they are, they're still out there. And they both want you dead. Kind of mutual, that feeling. We haven't seen the last of Hephaestus, I'm certain of that. It's powerful, creative, and driven. It won't stop building new hunter-killers, which means that someday, we may have to stop it. We? Or whoever gets there first. Hephaestus wasn't the only thing I learned about in the cut silence. Heard some things about the Banuka Conclave, too. You could stop right there. Is that what you told the hunters the Banuk sent after you? Before you opened fire? Oh no, Aloy. Only to you do I extend the courtesy of a warning. My past and my secrets are my own. You do well to remember that. It's a good thing you've got brains, Silence, because your personality could use some work. This discussion is concluded. I think it was over before it began. Catch up with you down the trail.
there.
Some blue gleam. Might as well trade it.
Now this thing is dangerous. <laughs> Take this. It's our talk. Two fire claws. This is gonna be tough. I can help with those. We have to stop meeting like this. We will. When these are driven from our land.
Thanks. Two of us, two of them. More of a fair fight. Their numbers are much depleted, thanks to you. We shall end this threat and keep Cyan safe. I don't fully understand everything she speaks of, but I can listen. Perhaps even learn. Take care of each other, Artok. Farewell. Give this to the Osram. Whatever they do, they do with passion. The cold seeps into your bones. Soon you forget what warmth I I heard. Aratak told me about Araya. I'm I'm sorry, Nelto. No apologies. Aratak said that in the end she was filled with the blue light. She got what she always wanted, didn't she? Each time I doubt my way forward, I think I should seek her guidance. And then I remember. The only guidance I'll receive is my own. Which will have to be good enough. There's much to do. The Fire Claws. Aratak asked me to help hunt them down. It's a dire task. But it occupies my attention, so I suppose I'm grateful for it. My scouts have tracked them across the cut. I'd like to think you're right, Naltuk. About Araya getting what she wanted. I think... I'm sure she did. All her victories. Surviving the Karja. Communing with the spirit. Defeating the daemon. Every goal she ever set for herself, she accomplished. And in the end... She was rewarded with the blue light itself. The songs say that our bodies are poor vessels for the light. Our hearts are too dark. But at least for a moment, before she passed, I hope she felt what it was like to be part of it. You don't sound like you trust yourself to take Aurea's place. Aurea inspired. Whatever we encountered, the new machines, the slaughter at Thunder's Drum. We knew we would endure, because she had endured worse. I don't know that I have her confidence. Trust is earned, Aloy, even in oneself. You earned Aurea's trust, didn't you? She believed you were up to this, and so do I. Do you? I wouldn't have said it if I hadn't meant it. And I suppose I'd better live up to your expectations. I've already found the Fire Claws in Altuk. It's over. That's it, then. That's the last of the Daemon's work washed away. The last notes of Aurea's song sung. The Cut is a safer place to live because of what you've accomplished. And now it's time to start anew. I'm glad I could be a part of it. As are we all, Aloy. Thank you. Are for Banuk to test their skills, not for Outlanders to grandstand. 